This is the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, America's most expensive racetrack. Critics call it an extravagant gamble, but no one can deny that Coda is the crown jewel of American racing. Built at a staggering cost of $400 million, this high-speed playground isn't just another racetrack, it's an engineering spectacle, featuring one of the most dramatic elevation changes in Formula One. However, this motorsport paradise didn't come easy. From racing against tight construction deadlines to battling unpredictable Texas weather, the story of Coda is as dramatic as the races it hosts. It's time to take a peek inside America's most daring racing experiment, how this ambitious project came to life, and whether it was truly worth the price tag. Before the Circuit of the Americas, the United States had a problem. It lacked a permanent venue for Formula One. The Indianapolis Grand Prix was dropped after 2007 due to financial disputes between race organizers and F1's commercial rights holder, Bernie Ecclestone, as IMS refused to meet rising hosting fees. Adding to the issue was the fallout from the disastrous 2005 US Grand Prix, where 14 cars withdrew due to Michelin tire safety concerns, leaving only six to race. The fiasco outraged fans, damaged F1's reputation in the US, and, combined with financial disagreements, led to the event's cancellation, leaving America without an F1 race for years. But one man saw an opportunity where others saw failure. Tavo Helmond, a motorsport promoter with deep ties to Formula One, believed the US didn't just need a racetrack, it needed a world-class motorsport destination. He also recognized that F1's reputation in America was damaged after past failures, but he saw a way to rebuild trust. Therefore, he envisioned a purpose-built Grand Prix circuit designed not just for F1, but also for MotoGP, NASCAR, and major entertainment events, ensuring long-term viability. It's a dream come true, and it's been a, a lot of work. Uh... Uh, on my part for, for probably about 10 years, really hard six years, but this is a, a tribute to everybody. I mean, the city of Austin, Austin Commercial, um, you know, Tilkey, the engineers that I hired to, to create my design, and, you know, tip off to, to Bobby and Red as well. You know, this is something that everyone should be really proud of. Unlike past U.S. venues, this track would offer a fan-centric experience with excellent sight lines and a layout inspired by legendary circuits. Helmond leveraged his F1 connections to secure a favorable deal and position the venue as more than just a track. It would be an iconic destination that could finally establish F1's foothold in America. But choosing the right city was crucial. Formula One had failed in U.S. cities like Indianapolis, Phoenix, and Detroit, where races struggled with attendance, lacked energy, or failed to build lasting fan engagement. Therefore, Hellman needed a location with global appeal, a booming economy, and a culture that thrived on major events, somewhere F1 wouldn't just visit, but truly belong. He landed on Austin, Texas, a fast-growing tech hub with a thriving music scene and a reputation for doing things differently. A bold vision required a bold design. A simple oval or standard road course wouldn't cut it. Therefore, renowned German architect Hermann Tilke known for designing modern F1 tracks like Sepang and Bahrain, was brought in to create something unique, technical, and exhilarating. Tilka's layout took inspiration from the world's most legendary circuits, borrowing the high-speed S's of Silverstone, the tight hairpins of Hockenheim, and the elevation changes of Spa. But he didn't just replicate greatness, he adapted it to Austin's rugged landscape, using the natural terrain to enhance the track's character. The most striking feature would be Turn 1, a steep 133-foot climb into a blind left-hand corner, forcing drivers to break late and commit to the unknown, making it a magnet for daring overtakes. But designing a masterpiece on paper was one thing. Building it under immense time pressure was another. The real battle was about to begin. With a bold vision and financial backing in place, Groundbreaking took place on December 31st, 2010, but Formula One had set a strict deadline, with the United States Grand Prix locked in for the 2012 season. Therefore, the entire circuit had to be designed, built, and ready for racing in less than two years. Missing the deadline could jeopardize the contract and F1's long-awaited return to the US. 
the Circuit of the Americas spans approximately 3.426 miles, with 20 turns, dramatic elevation changes, and high-speed straights designed to test both machines and drivers. But building a Formula One track isn't like paving an ordinary road. The surface had to be flawlessly smooth, designed for extreme speeds and precise grip levels. Therefore, construction teams used a specialized multi-layer asphalt mixture that included polymer-modified bitumen. This high-performance blend reduced micro-deformations from tire friction and improved water drainage, making it one of the most durable racetrack surfaces in the world, comparable to those at Silverstone and Suzuka, circuits known for their technical demands. The track surface had to be laid down with tolerances of just a few millimeters to prevent bumps, because when you're hitting 200 miles per hour, a pothole isn't just an inconvenience, it's a catastrophe. Therefore, the construction team used laser-guided paving machines and GPS-based survey systems to ensure every layer of asphalt was applied with pinpoint accuracy. Still, a track alone wasn't enough. To truly make Coda a world-class venue, it needed state-of-the-art facilities and spectator amenities. The circuit features around 38,000 permanent grandstand seats, but on race weekends, that number swells with temporary seating and general admission areas, therefore pushing total capacity beyond 120,000. I like turn, like right here at turn two, uh -huh. uh, you can see down the track mm -hmm. uh, at 15, uh, you can see really well. And then of course at one, oh, okay. the elevation change. Fans don't just watch the action, they can soak it in from VIP suites, the luxurious Paddock Club, and the massive Austin 360 Amphitheater, which doubles as a concert venue with a 14,000 person capacity. The designers also introduced the 251 foot observation tower, an engineering feat of its own. Built using a welded steel diagrid wrapped in red painted steel tubes, the tower offers a panoramic view of the circuit and Texas Hill Country. It also serves as a wind load resistant structure designed to withstand the region's high wind speeds without excessive sway. The tower's silhouette has since become as iconic to Coda as the Pagoda is to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. One of Coda's most visually striking features, Turn 1, posed an enormous engineering challenge. Texas is famous for big things, and this corner was no exception. A staggering 133-foot climb into a blind left-hander is steeper than the height of a 10-story building, creating one of the most dramatic elevation changes in Formula One. But carving out such a massive incline from the Texas landscape was no easy feat. Millions of cubic yards of soil had to be shifted, risking structural instability and potential erosion. Therefore, engineers employed soil stabilization techniques mixing limestone aggregate with stabilizing compounds to reinforce the incline and ensure long-term durability. But the challenges didn't end there. Texas's unpredictable weather brought heavy rains that delayed paving operations and threatened to push the project beyond its deadline. Therefore, construction teams worked around the clock, implementing methods to dry the surface and ensure proper asphalt curing. Every section of the track had to be rechecked and resurfaced if it didn't meet Formula One's strict standards. Despite the setbacks, Coda's construction was completed just weeks before its debut race. The final layer of asphalt was completed on September 21st, 2012, and Formula One officials conducted final inspections a few days later and approved the circuit. It was officially opened on October 21st, 2012, with Mario Andretti performing ceremonial laps in a Lotus 79. I have to say, both in a Formula 1 car and in an Indy car, it's an amazing track to drive and it's really enjoyable for, for us drivers. But while the construction had been a triumph, the real test was about to begin. Would Coda live up to its promise and establish itself as a premier destination on the F1 calendar? Or would it struggle to prove that America truly belonged in the world of Formula 1? The answer is coming next. The first Formula One race, the United States Grand Prix, took place on November 18, 2012. It marked a triumphant moment for American motorsport. The return of the United States Grand Prix was met with widespread excitement, as over 117,000 spectators packed the stands to witness Lewis Hamilton take victory in the inaugural race. The event proved that Formula One had a place in the United States, but turning that moment into long-term success would require financial stability, strategic growth, and a fan base that kept coming back. Building Coda was a high-stakes gamble. The project cost $400 million, about $500 million today, funded primarily through private investment, with billionaire Red McCombs as a key backer. But hosting Formula One is expensive, 
Therefore, Coda also relied on a $25 million annual subsidy from the Texas Major Events Trust Fund, a public program designed to support events that bring economic benefits to the state. But not everyone was on board. Critics argued that taxpayer money shouldn't support a private motorsport venue, especially since similar projects often failed to deliver the promised financial boost. The controversy escalated in 2018, when Coda lost over $20 million in state funding due to errors in reimbursement paperwork. To ensure financial stability, Coda had to expand beyond F1, gradually transforming into a multi-purpose venue. It welcomed MotoGP in 2013, added endurance racing in 2014, and embraced NASCAR's Xfinity Series in 2015, before finally securing a Cup Series race in 2021. Beyond motorsports, Coda evolved into a thriving entertainment hub, hosting concerts, festivals, and large-scale events, ensuring its place as a premier destination in Texas. Despite its early financial struggles, Coda has firmly established itself as a cornerstone of global motorsports. The 2022 United States Grand Prix shattered expectations, drawing over 400,000 fans, one of the largest crowds in F1 history, outpacing even legendary circuits like Silverstone and Suzuka. Yet, for all its triumphs, one lingering question remains. Has America fully embraced Formula One, or is Coda simply a high-priced anomaly? Has it truly secured F1's future in the US, or is its success a fleeting spectacle? Only time will tell. Ready to be amazed by the next groundbreaking construction project? Click on the video now and dive into a world where engineering and imagination collide. See you there.